Howdy. My name is Nonat, and today I'll be explaining all of the options available to rogues at first level in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Everybody knows about rogues, the sneaky, charismatic, dexterous, and talented backstabbers of the party. They're well known for being highly skilled both in and out of combat. In Pathfinder 2e, they're no different. In fact, their role outside of combat has been heightened to the extreme. Acquiring more skills and feats than any other class, the rogue is a living Swiss army knife. Let's take a look at what's available to these walking utility belts at first level. Rogues are a bit interesting in 2nd edition. Because of a feature I'll be talking about later, the rogue may make use of a multitude of different abilities. Taking into account the fact that the rogue can and likely will be using many different skills, almost every single ability score is useful to them. For combat specifically, dexterity will almost always be the number one stat you want to max out. Some rogues may prefer strength, however, but we'll get to that later. You can't pick a bad ancestry for a rogue, plain and simple. None of the core ancestries even take penalties to dexterity, so pick your favorite. Just maybe, if you're playing a high charisma build, don't pick a dwarf. Because rogues are good at everything, almost any background would work out well, but if you're looking for something classic that fits for roleplay purposes, I recommend the Acrobat, Gambler, Merchant, or Scout. Alongside their ability boosts from their ancestry and background, all rogues gain four free ability boosts of their choice. Normally at this point in the video, I would have told you about the rogue's boost to their key ability score as well. Rogues are just a bit special, so we'll be getting to that in a minute. Listed on page 179 of the core rulebook, rogues start with these proficiencies, and no, that is not a typo. They really start with nine unique skills, even more if their intelligence is high. The first feature for rogues offers three distinct choices. These are the Rogue Rackets. Each racket represents a path that the rogue has chosen and their specific specialty when it comes to their tactics. Each racket grants the rogue a different key ability score, meaning you'll add a plus two boost to whatever score is the key ability of your chosen racket. These rackets will also grant a wide variety of additional skills, features, and even specific feat availability at later levels. The three options available to rogues are the Ruffian, Scoundrel, and Thief. If the rogue picks Ruffian, their key ability score will be Strength. They become trained in Intimidation as well as Medium Armor. Additionally, the Ruffian gains the ability to make sneak attacks using any simple weapon so long as its damage die is no larger than a d8. I'll cover sneak attacks a bit later. If the rogue picks Scoundrel, their key ability score will be Charisma. They become trained in deception and diplomacy, and gain a bonus effect to the feint action. Normally, on a successful feint, the target is flat-footed against your next melee attack. When a scoundrel successfully feints, the target is flat-footed against all of their melee attacks until the end of the scoundrel's next turn. And finally, if the rogue picks Thief, their key ability score will be Dexterity. They become trained in thievery, and when they attack using a weapon with the finesse trait, they may add their dexterity modifier instead of their strength to their damage. No matter which racket is picked, all rogues know how to sneak attack. Any strike made against a flat-footed creature with an agile or finesse melee weapon, agile or finesse unarmed attack, or any ranged weapon deals an additional 1d6 precision damage. The only exception to this being the ruffian who can make a sneak attack with any simple weapon. Rogues also begin with surprise attack. In certain circumstances, rogues can roll deception or stealth for initiative instead of perception. In this case, any creature that hasn't acted yet is considered flat-footed only to the rogue, allowing for easy first-round sneak attacks. Rogues are also the only class to acquire a skill feat right at first level. In fact, rogues gain skill feats every single level, while other classes only acquire them every other level. Since there are literally dozens of skill feats, I won't be covering them in this video, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a few videos going into each skill feat in depth. Even with all of these features, rogues are still a martial class, and thus are allowed to pick a feat at first level. 
Starting off, Nimble Dodge allows the Rogue, when targeted by an attack they can see, to use their reaction to gain a plus two circumstance bonus to armor class against that attack. They may not use this reaction if they are currently encumbered. Trap Finder grants the Rogue a plus one circumstance bonus to perception checks when detecting traps, to armor class against attacks made by traps, and to saving throws against trap effects. While exploring, even if you don't specifically state that you're searching for secrets, you are allowed to make a free check specifically to find traps. Twin Feint can only be used if the Rogue is wielding a different weapon in each hand. The rogue uses two actions to make two strikes. The first is made normally, and the second strike treats the target as flat-footed. The second strike still suffers a multiple attack penalty like normal. Finally, your next can only be chosen if the rogue is trained in the intimidation skill. This feat grants a reaction that can only be used when the rogue reduces a target's hit points to zero. The rogue may make a free intimidation check with a plus two circumstance bonus to demoralize any nearby target with a clear line of sight. And that's about it. This video was honestly shorter than I expected. Rogues have a ton going on at first level, but most of that depth comes from the wide choice of skills and skill feats available to them. Even a low level rogue has so many options available outside of combat that any DM should fear the day that more than one rogue shows up to the table. While it can be a tad bit overwhelming, I personally love the way Paizo made rogues feel just like insane skill junkies. I don't know if I personally plan to play a rogue anytime soon, but let me know in the comments if you're currently playing one or if you plan to play one in the near future. I love hearing about your character concepts. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and ring the bell to know exactly when the next video goes live. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Troy Hughes, Quid Thulu, Paul Rand, and Trevor, aka The Conqueror, as well as the rest of my wonderful patrons. Links to my Patreon, Discord, and Twitter are found right down in the description. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, no nat ones.